Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, Sunday, February 13th, the day before all singles are very uh, uh, jaded day, 2022. My name's Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. <laughs> that makes me carry. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, but the terminal length episode number of uh, six thirty six, and we have a very special guest of Edward Angelini Cook. Yay! Yay! It is the day before V Day, uh, and uh, so uh, what are we talking about today in our landscape of relationship series? Apparently, we're going to learn how to love in five different languages. Mm. But I'm not that good of a polylinguist, so... <laughs> yeah. I only need two, two languages, English and bad English. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. Oh. Hmm? I can't believe you did what? Okay, sorry. Okay. So if you didn't hear the, hear the pre-show, sorry, y'all. Um, I spelled Patty, P-A-T-T-Y. Oh. I know, right? Like, no, thank you. What was I thinking? Apparently wasn't. All anyway, right. Anyways. Right along. <laughs> Back on <laughs> subject. <laughs> love languages. Oh. Yay, love languages. So and that's Ed... the show. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Good night, folks. No, 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 no. Like, so there's this whole philosophy of like how we communicate, how we express like the ways that we like to be loved. This is this is my non-official definition, shooting from the hip kind of thing. And because it is going to be VD Singles Awareness Day, uh, within hours of when we're recording this, it's going to start, and then uh, the day after that is apparently when chocolate goes on sale, or at least all the candies. Um, mm. So we figured, Ed, when we were going to have you back this month for our continuing series and landscape of relationships, let's talk about what Cupid's effect is supposed to be for people. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, I mean, I try to uh, make a concerted effort when we have these topics that I'm not only talking about romantic relationships, I'm also talking about other kinds of relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we know that love is not just a romantic concept. Uh, so I figure it'd be a really good um, time to talk about a popular concept called the five languages of love that was uh, developed by Gary um, Bishop. Chapman? No, J Gary Chapman. Gary Bishop is a totally, completely <laughs> other author. Um, but anyway, so, uh, I mean, I know that the love languages is very, rather popular, but for anybody who doesn't know, um, mm -hmm. uh, Gary Bishop says that we all have different ways of um, receiving um, our love, like the ways that we like to be um, receive affection. Uh, and he sees this through words of affirmation, quality time, acts of service, gifts, and physical touch. So like, you know, words of affirmation, you know, if we're going to put this to, um, uh, if I'm going to use an example, right, um, Britney Spears, we can use 
her song, uh, Hit Me Baby One More Time, is a really good teaching tool here. So, um, you know, she says, my loneliness is killing me. That's physical touch. <laughs> I must confess, I still believe. Still believe. That's words of affirmation. When I'm not with you, I lose my mind. That's quality time. Give me a sign. That's uh, giving um, gifts. Hit me, baby, one more time. As I'm like literally holding up an imaginary microphone to my face right now. I'm ridiculous. That was <laughs> acts of service. Uh, um, all, I can, all, all I can say is is we are definitely not going to get a, a copyright claim on this. Just saying. Well, it's right, because it's because it's Edward singing it. It's not actually Britney Spears <laughs> playing the song with, with the, with the <laughs> copyright. It was supposed to be a joke about quality of singing. That's all. Oh! Where is, I was waiting for the shade set, which completely disappears. <laughs> Damn. People's. Damn, Where, where's Patty? <laughs> Somebody call Patty LaPone. I need her in here right now. Oh. Um, there so, we go. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah. So this concept has been um, used in popular culture often. Um, and a lot of times people can take it, you know, uh, and run with it. Um, and sometimes it can be really helpful um, in other areas. So like, you know, some other examples of how this has been used um, is to explain how neurodivergent individuals um, receive affection. Uh, so that's through, or how they share um, their affection. So that's through info dumping, parallel play, support swapping, um, <laughs> Please crush my soul back into my body. Wow. And, <laughs> and I found this really cool rock button leaf, and I thought you would like it. I always really appreciate that one. Um, <laughs> uh, and so then, like, I know, right? And then, um, like, I have seen, and I, I've linked some TikToks. Uh, there are a bunch of TikToks uh, where people talk about their different love languages. My love language is sharing tiktoks um <laughs> i share a bunch of tiktoks with a lot of different people if you're not receiving tiktoks from me oh well um okay. so okay. like he you know so there's this so there's a tweet here that says my love language is telling jokes at your expense that are progressively more inappropriate until i cross a line and have to apologize <laughs> <laughs> i actually think that's that's Sort of hilarious. I like that. Um, <laughs> my, mm -hmm. my my partner's love language is puns, all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mine is um, sending me videos or pictures and then looking at me until I open it <laughs> to see my reaction. That's his love language. I love it. Uh, um, so then, you know, there are five other love languages, a great meal together, roasting each other, acts of nasty sex, shut the fuck up and still enjoy each other, and napping together. Mm -hmm. um, and then my personal favorite that I've seen is the five love languages, just chocolate. <laughs> just chocolate. cross off all the other, yeah. other right. basics chocolate. and chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. chocolate. Yeah, for, for I those have, that are listening to the podcast, that was a bit of a visual. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Although some people would cringe at what you're eating. I absolutely adore those. Let them cringe. Mm -hmm. so, so there is a quiz that you can take um to find out what your love language is what your love language is so it will give you a a rank from one to five um based on percentages uh and before the podcast um i had uh shared this with um gary damon and jeff um and to no shock from anybody 
my number one love language is physical touch at 40%. Um, wow. I know. I am a cuddle monster. Uh, and then followed by words of affirmation, quality time, acts of service, and receiving gifts, which is really interesting because for my birthday or anything, um, I usually tell uh, Jim that uh, I don't really want things. Um, I want experiences. Um, so, yeah, mm -hmm. make, um, make a memory with me. Mm. Oh, that sounds so sweet. I'm sorry. I mean, sorry. you could say that's <laughs> giving the gift of a quality time. Uh, it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, I don't – things um, uh, are nice. Um, but – Agreed. I like to go somewhere, do something. Mm -hmm. I think I've gotten to the point where it's like, like, I don't need things anymore. I don't really have any place to put things. I don't need – things right now I, I got enough shit yeah i got enough shit <laughs> i mean i gifts of like an itunes ticket or uh the, the, the gift card that sort of things that that's probably more along my lines i mean with my mm -hmm. results i'm gonna go the opposite direction uh my it, with three percent of the vote uh i got receiving gifts so see me gifts I like it. Not high on the plate. With 13%, I got words of affection or affirmation, excuse me. At 27%, tied for second place is acts of service and quality time. Mm. And the number one is physical touch. At what percent? 30%. So I'm not mm. as much of a cuddle monster as, as Edward here. I am definitely a, a pickle tub. <laughs> or I'm sorry, no, a pickle ocean to reference a previous uh, topic on, I don't remember what topic that was where we talked about skin hunger. <laughs> I think we, well, no, you weren't on that. No, that was one of our la most recent episodes. We talked about such starvation, but I don't think. Mm. I want to say that was our last episode. Yeah. That that is definitely a dimension of skin hunger. Look at Gary. Go ahead. Be proud about that. Yas. Anyway. What? <laughs> that moment. Yeah. Skin hunger. Anyway. Uh, is it me? I guess it's me. Um, oh dear, hold on. Oh no. Um, so, yeah, uh, so surprisingly, awkwardly, and I was, I'm a little surprised at this, my lowest was physical touch at 3%. <laughs> Which, I'm not surprised. I mean, what? Hold on. <laughs> you're you're just not a cuddle person. Or as much of them. You like it, it, you know, on occasion, but there's other things that you would prefer. You know, it's higher on the list. That's all. So this is my interpretation. I'm surprised that physical touch is as high as it is on mine because I think what Damon and I share in some aspect, and I could be wrong, is that there's a time and a place and like a context and a person. So like, I'm not, I'm not like, for instance, if someone was to come up to me at work and want to give me a hug, that's okay. I probably wouldn't be expecting it. It's work. And how well do I know you? Mm -hmm. Like, cause so, and I think out of the two of us, Damon is more of the don't touch me. And it's not like, you know, like, I don't want you to touch me because I don't like you. It's just, that's not, you know. Mm -hmm. You're not a real touchy feely it, kind I was, of person. So to kind of put it into a kink perspective, it's one of the few things about me that is very cat like, as opposed to pup like. Like I will admit, like there are moments where I'm like, Please, get no. Mm -mm. <laughs> you do not have uh -uh. my consent. <laughs> you know, why? Why are you get up off me? <laughs> <laughs> 
um, hell, and 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 I and I agree. Think as I was taking the test, like even with Jim, like we have those moments where I'm like, I I love you. No, don't no, just don't. I love you. No, don't touch me. Like please. Mm. Mm. Well, I so I think that um when we get into the criticisms of this, I think that this will that that will illuminate that okay. because yeah. Uh, yeah, put a pin in that one. Sure. Boop. Pin. Boop. Uh, so tied for third or fourth place, uh, third place, is um, Words of Affirmation and Receiving Gifts, um, which are both at 20%, which is fair. Um, I do like words, and I do like getting things, but it's not always, you know, the top priority. Mm-hmm. Um, at 27% in second place is quality time. And I will admit that I do enjoy like spending time with someone and um, being around people, especially. But my number one at 30% was acts of service. Um, and hell, that kind of just, makes sense. Yeah. And just right. And tonight, that. Um, uh, like I was, I think I was talking about during um, pre-show. Um, Jim took out the garbage and recycling. Um, we normally would wait until after I was done with the show, but he went on ahead and did it now. Um, I took now. I granted I took the recycling to the bin and got it out of the kitchen, but um, I wasn't going to go. Our back steps are still icy and stuff from the recent um, winter weather. So I wasn't going to take it down the steps. So the only other way to really get it done is to go around through the garage and all that stuff. And I wasn't really having it. Um, but I guess I'm assuming, again, I'm assuming that he went on ahead and got it, took care of it himself. And that was really, I really appreciated. Like, mm-hmm. he knew that I was going to be busy pretty much from 6 o'clock-ish on because of the podcast. And he went on ahead and did it. And I'm like, that's, that's sweet. So, Aww. yeah. Gary. Yes. I'm very curious about yours. Um, I'm a little, I'll be honest, I'm a little surprised with mine. Um, probably when we get into discussing criticisms, um, this may be something that we'll get into further. Um, <clears throat> because I feel like um, the the diametric, like, you only get when you go through the quiz, you get two selections. It's either A or B, one or mm-hmm. two. And so, like, I found times where I was a little annoyed because I was like, like, some were very clear, and others I was like, well, I need more about this. And what I started realizing is, like, I need to pay attention to how my gut feels. So, like, when I read this thing, how, how, like, what, like, like, does my stomach get upset? Like, do I feel a little stressed? Do I feel a little anxiety? Like, then that's the negative one. And so that was kind of what was driving it. So I find my results interesting. Um, I am totally not surprised that in last place at 3% is receiving gifts. Um, and what I realized is, is like, that is totally a control issue. <laughs> and it, and the reason why is because I don't want people to give me things because one, they feel obligated they need to give them to me or or more importantly, that you give me things that you think I need, but I haven't asked for. So <laughs> like, because I'm particular about what I want, I would only expect gifts of the things that I'm seeking or looking for. Mm. So like, if you checked out my Amazon wish list, I was just going to say that. <laughs> and you and you mailed to me as a gift something I had publicly listed on there, then that to me would be an act of love because you actually took the time to know exactly what I wanted. As opposed to I came across this cool thing and I think like it reminds me of you or this like seems like something you would like. That last part is the big like like kind of annoyance thing because I'm like, yeah, but uh, okay. <laughs> Do you? It was kind of like my Christmas where I ended up getting mugs or cups, uh, shirts from Caribou Coffee, but I would prefer just the coffee. A consumable versus this, because you know what? I don't really have a place to put these. Right, 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 right. And and so, you know, I also like things that are very functional. 
Um, so <laughs> to get something from someone, it's like, well, it needs to serve a purpose for me. Um, and so if it doesn't do that, then why are we, why are we doing this? Here, Gary, um, have this Cheesecake of the Month Club membership. Why? No, Cheesecake of the I Month Club. I thought you would like cheesecake. It's well, a consumable okay. skill. No, 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 no. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. But, like, you're not wrong. Like, I'm a little conflicted. Like, I'm listening to David's, you know, example, and I was like, my gut reaction is, do I need this? No. Am I going to be mad about it? No. Will I Will I probably appreciate it? Yes. Eventually. <laughs> like, by the by the eighth, tenth month, I might be like, okay. God. Like, like in the first month, I know me. I'll probably, if it's a good cheesecake, I'll eat the cheesecake over a course of a week. And then, like, you know, by the time I get to the fourth month, okay, it'll probably last me, like, two weeks. And then as we get towards the end of the year, I'll be like, okay. I still got the one from last month in the freezer. <laughs> So, like, that's probably true. It's a little questionable as if it's the thing that I need or the thing that I want, but mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it's difficult to say. Like, and, and I'm and be all right. So here's like some you know some background case history. Only child, um, and that doesn't mean spoiled. That means like I didn't have to share things with other people. I also didn't like grow up in an environment where I like um had people to give me things. Or vice versa. So I'm incredibly possessive about my life. Like everything is just mine because it's always kind of been mine. Um, and you know, uh, so the the concept of living with another person, sharing a space, having things of that sort, like that takes time to work through. And so I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, getting getting things from other people is is a different issue. Um, I will be surprised. I will say this. Because of the way the quiz is put together, the fact that acts of service is low and it's in fourth place and it's as low as it is surprised me, but not because – but because I took the quiz, I knew how it was asking of things, and therefore the result turns out that way. So I don't know if that makes any sense, but, like, I didn't care for the context in which it asked about acts of service. Mm. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't mind acts of service, but they need to be the right acts of service. Um. <laughs> so, <laughs> in other words, you know, he mentioned something about criticism about this. You're already yeah. starting that. Well, but right. I think it's, but I think it's actually a criticism just on the quiz itself. Yeah, yeah. I will own. Mm -hmm. At a certain point in time, I was looking at it, and I was again as I was going through mine. I thought um, receiving gifts was going to be a little bit higher than it was on my, because there are questions in the in the again in the quiz that are very kind of like you get this thing for no reason kind of thing and i'm like okay he, your your partner is mean more meaningful to me when my partner like gives me a gift for no reason at all for for lack of a better phrase i can't remember what it exactly said mm -hmm. i was kind of like yeah and I, I agree i like that like that's something i particularly enjoy because it means similar to what gary was thinking but like someone is thinking of you or they saw something that they thought you would like i like that um, am I, I, not, but I, I also like a little bit of that control too. Cause you know, when it comes time to like holiday, for example, like every year we get asked like by, um, Jim's side of the family. Sorry. I heard something. I was like, what is that? Probably Jim in the basement. Anyway. Um, like her, um, we get like question like, what do you want for Christmas? Or Jim will ask me like, what do you want for Christmas or birthday or something? And like, and I genuinely don't know, because I don't gifts or things I don't always think about for myself. Mm -hmm. I don't think about getting things for myself or getting gifts for someone because at the end of the day, I would just get it myself if I want it. Gary, can you put gift giving on the list? For sure. landscapes and relationships in the future. Ah, yeah. This is a this is a really interesting topic. I mean, yeah. here's here's a slight pro tip when it comes to like gifts is if during during any time of the year there's something that you kind of want, 
but you're not willing to get it like right now or anything. You might get it later. But on your Amazon wish list. I just started utilizing an Amazon wish list. Mm-hmm. Love. And um, for my birthday this year, Jim asked me the best question he could have possibly ever asked me is, is there anything that you need for work that you haven't gotten for yourself yet? Like any books or anything? And I was like, <gasps> <laughs> here. here we go here all these things right but that see that to me is an act of love in itself because the person was attuned with who you are so much so that they were like what have you not gotten for yourself yet that i can get for you or um you know is kind of on a on a well, on a wish list you know mm-hmm. or perhaps a need list like like to me that that's really indicative of of like some some care and concern because they actually asked as opposed to presuming and what i found in my lifetime is that some people who are in my life because i do well at least based on the responses i get from people at gift giving they want to rise to the same level in return, but I'm a highly observant person and I pay attention to things and I look for little nuances and I especially pick up on when you blatantly tell me what you want, but you may not realize you've done that. So like friends of mine have said, oh my God, like, how did you know to get me this? And I'm like, cause you said you wanted it. And they're like, I did. And I was like, yep. And if I got and if I was really having a, a smarmy moment, I'm like, well, on this day, we were doing this thing, and you said, hence I went into Amazon or in my little note thing or whatever, and was like, da 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 da. da. Um, most of the time, it works well. There is notably one very specific time it kind of went sideways on me because I got the gift, gave it to them for Christmas as a holiday gift, and the person said, I don't understand why you got this for me. And I was like, because you said you like, like, so anyways, we were watching a movie for context. They said they loved the soundtrack. They really liked a lot of the music in it. So I immediately went online, boop, boop, ba doop, looked for the soundtrack, got the CD, waited, ordered it. You know, actually, I think I bought it right then and then to be shipped to my home and then wrapped it or whatever, you know, when the holiday season came, I gave it to them. They had zero memory of watching the movie, let alone saying that they like the music. <laughs> and so to this day, or for the rest of my you know living days in this life, I'm like, I got you what you wanted. Like, I can't help you that you don't recall, you don't remember, like, like there's nothing I can do about this. Like, and, and so. <laughs> Well, so um, Enjoy. I, uh, for for Christmas this past year, um, I have an I don't want to say I have an issue with gift giving or receiving gifts. I do. I think everybody has their own thing, as we're mm-hmm. finding. But um, sometimes I run into the anxiety that people have no idea who I am. Um, so, like, I'm always worried that you don't know me and you're just going to get what, what I project out into the world um, mm-hmm. and like you don't actually know me <laughs> right yeah so um, so my friend um, got me a gift and he said listen this this is a little out there but you're the I saw this and you're the only person I know that would be able to pull this off and I uh-huh. said Okay. <laughs> Does so for glow? context, girl, yes. is that it, is that an LED ball cap? It sure the hell is. So um it looks so much better when the lights are out. But like <laughs> I saw this and I like, I'm not gonna lie, my eyes rolled. Um, <laughs> Because I was like, oh, man. Um, but then when I saw it, like I saw what my friend saw, I was like, I do look good in that hat. <laughs> like my friend saw something I wouldn't have ever gotten for myself ever. Um, and he, and like the fact that he thought enough to go, 
I would like to see Edward be Edward in this hat. I was very touched by that. Um, mm -hmm. So like that kind of challenged some of my own anxieties um, about how other people see me. Mm -hmm. um, that, Mama. Interesting. I can't. I cannot wait until the summer. I can't. Like I, I see you wearing that on the campground. Yeah. Oh, get out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> on the trail at night. I Mama's mean, dance floor at the woods. Yeah. Mama, please. <laughs> like have have a dance party, yeah. walking around like ha like just strolling around like the you know. I mean, I do see it at night. I mean, you would probably turn it off at like certain points, depending on what you're doing. But like having it on. No, 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 honey, honey. It is totally advertising. If the brims to the front or the brims to the back, hello. Thank like... you. Oh, <laughs> oh or, uh, brim to the side. Do you want to include that? And it changes color. Queen. And pulses. Oh, Queen. Man. Right. So here's my thing is, and you were like, so you put it on, you don't describe what it is, but quickly I can assess what it is. And I was like, oh, that's totally an Ed thing. That's, that's unicorn. Like, I don't know what else to say about that. Oh, but, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is not Edward's therapy hour, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I am, you know, uh, the whole unicorn thing is sometimes like a difficult thing to, to carry. Um, so sometimes I'm like, you know, I, I don't know. It's a thing. Um, but I was, I was, I was pleased with that. So I do want to say this, like one of the things that I think that's, um, misrepresented. So this is, all right, I will, I will put out this preface. Data is subjective. Data is about the interpretation and how it's deemed by who is working with the data and then the audience. And here's part of why I'm saying that. So in my results, physical touch is the highest. But if a lot of people are close enough to know me, they would probably be surprised to see that it's so high as it is. I am surprised. I am genuinely surprised that it's so high. But, okay, so where, go, but go ahead, is, David, and say and say why. Go ahead. I'm, but like I no, there's a I I I I, I see it as diff. I see it because I know you and your your you have your issues with regards to like being touched in certain ways. You're especially, not wrong. Especially in like public spaces and what have you. However, and I'm gonna caveat this. There's a difference between that and then like affection, love, like someone that I care about genuinely. Right, because the questions in the quiz are very explicitly about receiving physical affection from someone you know, someone you love, someone you care about. Um, and the way some of the questions are crafted, I think one of them was kind of like, you know, like, would you like, you know, what you would what you prefer? And it was something about like a tender touch of support, like, you know, when you're with like someone that you love or whatever. So if you choose that, like that ranks your physical touch higher. But if you just look at these statistics, I could see people being like, oh, like Gary's highest, you know, thing, love language is to be touched. So maybe if I don't know you, if I don't know you, don't come touch me. Like, hello. Yep. Consent? You kind of have to understand the quiz that uh, to, to really understand the full extent of the matter. Well, so this is this is actually a really interesting segue into um the criticisms of this uh and i also want to say that how i'm approaching this is different than how i thought i was going to approach this at the beginning because mm. what gary just said like and what i kind of just said was that like what you see from the inside is not always necessarily what is on the inside right or what you see from the outside is not always what what is on the inside right uh so like there are different levels of intimacy um and one of the, my biggest challenges with this is, and this is no um, uh, like shade to my husband, but I had to say, I had to take Jim out of answering these questions because 
uh, Jim is not uh, physical touch is not his, he, he would say that is his least favorite. Um, so like receiving a hug from my husband or like some kind of like, to me is not something I would prefer from him. Um, because his strengths lie in other, uh, languages. Um, so context matters. So like, um, I, need words of affirmation from him. I love uh, like acts of service, quality time from him. Um, and, you know, and I would say receiving gifts because he's an amazing gift giver. Um, <laughs> and physical touch is the bottom. Um, being mm -hmm. somebody who like is a physical, I, I love touch, but like I know that that is not his strength and I get that from other people. So context is very, very important. That actually makes a whole lot of sense. Sorry, as I'm kind of like thinking about it. And, and as the other person who's partnered on the show, um, it, it, I, I wonder if I took Jim out of the equation, that sounds really weird, but like took him yeah. out of the equation and focused more on myself. I wonder if the, if the results would be different. Well, and, and that is interesting because when I was going through the quiz and I'm answering the questions because I'm single, I was thinking of the context of some of these scenarios that are posed. If I was with somebody, would I want that? Would I welcome mm. that? Like, like, and so what I find interesting about this is I think my past relationships would probably have some opinions about these results. Because I think a few of them would be like, absolutely not. This is the incorrect order. Like they would say that physical touch should absolutely not be at the top because they didn't think that that was something that I wanted. But that's more about what you're letting your partner know that you want yep. and what you need. That's about communicating. That's about like, that's a whole different dynamic, like where the, t the test removes that. Like it's not asking you, if you do these things, it's just saying, would you desire or want, accept, so on and so forth. I suppose and, you could use the, the, the quiz as a communication method saying, hey, take this quiz and just think right. about me during this entire time whenever it's mentioning someone else. Oh, that's a really good suggestion. Uh, I want to caveat that. And I think you should take it twice. I think you should take it with this person in mind. And I think you should take it not focusing on, on anybody. Yes, absolutely. Because then I'd like to see the differences in the results between the two. Cause that to me would be more indicative of what you would want just in life in general versus what you would want with this individual. Also in and, general, for any type of these quiz take with the great salt. Robert, and, but. and it also would be a really good tool for appreciation. This is what I really appreciate about um, about you, right? Like when I when I took this with you in mind, these are the results. This is what I appreciate. Mm. I think that's fascinating. Yeah, like I, I think this would be good in, in couples um, therapy for them to take it, yeah. thinking of the other person. Um, and like I said, uh, to me, I, I'm not really about comparative. So like to me, that would be interesting to also do it like – but uh, yeah, I don't. I wouldn't do it back to back. Obviously, like I would put some time in between the two takings, and I would really make. In fact, I'd probably request that the first one is with nobody in mind, and then make them go back later and have them do it again with only their partner in mind, in an attempt to uh, try to get clean data, like in mm -hmm. terms of the results out of it, and then see where that where that goes. Because, like, yes, physical touch is the highest for me. But that's because I know that that's something I haven't had a lot of in my life. So, like, that's what I really want out of somebody. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a whole other thing. Mm. Like, so that's why, David, I thought it was funny when you were like, I am really surprised to see size on yours. And I was like, I'm not, and yet I am. Like, again, how the quiz were, was looking for information. Yeah. I'm not surprised to see that it came out the highest and yet on the other end of it like when i sit and really think about it it's like if i had a partner and we were together and we were like watching tv we're both like sort of watching video or a movie and we're on our devices or whatever if they were to just like reach out and like 
touch my arm, touch my hand or shoulder, whatever, I wouldn't recoil from that. And there would be a small part of me that would be like, oh, I like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, like it's yeah. just, but I get it. But like, again, that's them sort of knowing that or figuring that out or me communicating it or something. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, like it's, it's, there's other stuff. So yeah, for me, yeah. I wasn't surprised to see quality time um, was also pretty high. Uh, words of affirmation, eh, like I expected that would actually be lower. And oh, it's only because again, I'm not used to that. Like I didn't grow up in an environment where I was constantly complimented and like, you know, boosted and yeah. made, you know, to feel really uh, good about certain things. The acts of service, I'm not surprised as low, but again, I'm, I'm, I know this about yeah. me. I'm difficult. Like I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> persnickety about, again, it's control. It's, it's how I like things. So this, all those things where they were like, you know, someone doing something for you, helping you with something. I was like, no, not really. <laughs> well, don't. I also think, get... think about the weight on this. Like your quality time and physical touch, they're, they're like, right next to each other three three points off well i thought that was very interesting so, that they were super close i was like huh interesting so and, and even to for my me, future partner if you really want to like knock it out of the park with me we spend quality time touching each other that's how that works boom there you go <laughs> yeah so, i i uh, think the weight actually is, is a big big thing to deal with well like if we totally. look at 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 uh, ads, we got forty percent at physical touch. The next lowest is twenty points lower, right? And then everything else is starting to kind of like even out. Well, also um, one of my other um, things with this is when some of my anxiety triggers were going off um, with the words of affirmation because they kind of sounded like seeking approval. Mm. And yeah. I know as somebody who has anxious attachment, getting those words of affirmation is not is something that I really, really do want, but I know where that comes from and that's not helping. Mm. Um, so even though I took it with that, that mentality, it still was number two. <laughs> um, you know, my anxieties definitely found a way to get through there. The test doesn't um, know, you know, they know. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, but like, so, but I think that another dimension of this that we're talking about um, that is a criticism of this is the origin, like the Gary Chapman um, is a white cisgender man who is a Baptist preacher. Uh, um, so he is coming at this from there is one person that you are that you have in mind with this. Wow. And Interesting. There it lies so much of the flaws. <laughs> yep. Because it well, it, it, okay, let me uh, rewind. Let me take that back a second. If you ascribe to a mono concept, like one person, one love, one like deity, one whatever, then this that very much would align with you. If you are a person who is much more poly, then absolutely I can see where this does not align. I don't even. I. I'm. Eh. Oh. Yes. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, uh, I don't think that is sustainable. Um, I don't think that like uh, Chapman's uh, probably definition of um, relationship love is sustainable i think that it's placing too much pressure on one person and we are going into a adventuring party um with only <laughs> one person we need others um in order because one person can't be your everything um yeah. well so, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I think that's a little projecting though ed i'm just gonna play a little advocate like opposite side here uh -oh. i think if you believe that you could be satisfied with that. 
Okay. I'm not saying that you have to agree with that. I'm just saying, like, I, I, I just really feel a little bit of like, this is, this is awkward, but I feel it's a little yucky yum kind of weirdness. It's like, who am I to say if that is satisfactory for you? It could very much be that case. It's it's parallel to me, like the 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 disagreement amongst people about whether or not you know you can be um, monogamous versus not monogamous. I guess I'll phrase it that way, and and where those things lie. And you know what I what I've come to discover for me for me is the <laughs> the <laughs> that the colors are that there are gradients. It is not black white there is everything in between the two and therefore it cannot be so like binary conceptual like yes no you know um and so in terms of this i'm like mm, okay like if you if you really you know are raised and believe that or whatever that's okay it's i think i don't know to me i'm always like it's always completely possible it's in the realm of of whatever you could yeah Grow up in a specific place with a very specific concept and never leave, never go anywhere. Do you know what I mean? And mm. and ergo, you have a very simplified, small circle uh, experience and existence. But love yeah. comes in so many forms. Yeah. Um, no, I hear that. And and Gary, you are you are correct, right? There are a lot of um, levels, gradients. Um, it is a spectrum of sorts. Um, and I would say that for those who are more on the like very strict, um, like my one person meets all of my needs, I would love to see the resentment list. Hmm. They may they may tell me that they're satisfied, but I want to know what they're I want to know what they are resentful for. Well, and I I think that even if like you have a monogamous relationship, meaning like boyfriends, girlfriends, other friends, uh, 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 partners, etc., some of the needs that you would have, and this is where not necessarily polyamory, but but just other people that are just friends, best friends or something, can still meet some of your needs, which aren't necessarily, maybe not necessarily sexual needs, but like somebody you just really enjoy hanging out with. You, you love them. They're, they're my best friend. I absolutely love them. Do I want to have a relationship? Do I want to marry them? No, but... They're great friends. I love them as a friend. Mm. My brother, my sister, I love them as brothers and sisters. Um, mm. And I some don't... of your needs can be taken care of by that, which isn't necessarily going to be sexual, but some of your needs. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to move on. That's what I'm going to do. Because <laughs> I have, I, there's my, I'm sitting here in my head and I don't think I want to hear what's going on in my head because I agree and disagree with everything that has been said and I can sit here and. Yeah. I, I just think that thing, I, but... I, I think that if anything, the Gary Chapman thing is probably thinking about romantic relationships, but when you think about it, love comes in many sh different shapes instead of just romantic relationships. Uh, preach. Yes. Um, Cause this is not, yeah. Like, I think I would love to, know, well, and this is why it's not a perfect, um, a perfect model because it is assuming that everybody is romantic and everybody is sexual, um, when there are definitely asexual and aromantic people. Also that. Um, well, and don't forget, like some, some philosophies are that, uh, physical intimacy is really meant to be like leading to procreation. And that is yeah. that is its purpose. So uh, that I guess Ed is really what I was trying to say is I was just thinking about this like recently I was um, at a business that is uh, owned and operated by a faith community that is not my own. Mm -hmm. And as we were talking and I was trying to figure out what I was saying, I thought this is a representation of like if you are a part of this community and you are devout, I can completely accept and understand that you would say to me. I am content. I do not have like 
disgruntlement or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Because you have oh, yeah. a concept Values. and a philosophy. Right, right, right. And ergo, like this, therefore it does match or work for them. But I could also understand how it wouldn't for others. So yeah. 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 Um was, yeah. oh what? What Damon? No, 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 no. Keep going. <laughs> oh, um, so to 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 also kind of piggyback off of that, when we think about, you know, just uh, the whole procreation aspect, right? Like sexual strategies theory. Um, Mr. Chapman <laughs> is also homophobic <laughs> and also subscribes to the belief that, uh, you know, a relationship marriage um, is between a man and a woman, right? So in doing some research, right, I have, um, I uh, in, the, in the notes, there's a, a link of, um you know uh a blogger uh talking about how girl <laughs> that title that title <laughs> so the article the blog article title at medium.com is <clears throat> the bigot who wrote quote the five love languages end quote might hate you <laughs> i think it's a great it's awesome it's a really good article um and it really talks about the fact that like, hey, listen, you know, there are some really great ideas here, um, but there are also some, uh, but it's coming from like a unqualified uh, and bigoted interesting. person. So, uh, so very interesting is, I'm sorry, I just like, I'm just skimming through this article and I'm just like, oh, mm -hmm. okay. So you ain't even, you ain't even a therapist. You just some religious dude. Okay, cool. Um, that's nice. And I, while I, again, I, for many people, like, again, I took the test and I, I do understand, like, what you can get from it. Like, the whole love languages, I understand that part of it, because it does make sense. But then you have to take it, kind of what we've been doing today, and kind of change it, like, turn it into a, from, it, with a more critical eye. And a contextual like, lens. Yeah, like just look at look at it a little differently, you know. Um, I if I remember, I think mine was my top one was like access service. I keep forgetting because I I want to say words of affirmation, but it's not true. Um, and I was like, okay, I had to think about it for a minute, and I was as I was going through the questions, and I was like, there are things that I tend to like more than anything else, and that's when someone. I know it sounds kind of lazy and petty, but I love it when people do stuff for me. Like, I j in general. Shut up, Gary. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm busy. I'm listening, oh, and, and I'm reading. busy reading further down to the article. Oh, girl. Okay, but yeah. Yep. And, and so, and but it, it, and then I have to think about it. Okay, well, that makes sense. But what does that mean? And probably for him. And it sounds bad, but in probably in this one dude's eyes that wrote this thing, it'd be like, I'd have a wife that would always be there to, like, clean up after me and pick up my things uh, or whatever and do, like, the dry cleaning. Like, you've seen the 50s. You see the Stepford Wives, that kind of shit. Like, like, go and have the slippers and stuff. I don't think I would want that, like, level because I'm also pretty fucking independent. Like, I can do the shit on myself. If I can do it myself, I'm going to do it myself. Um, so that's Little what acts of service is really what yeah, we're talking about here. things are nice. The things that, on occasion, that if I, was, if I was having a bad day and Jim made, like, was like, okay, let me just make his favorite dinner. Or he know, I know he's going to like this, so let me order... Um, your eyes, Gary, are freaking me out. Um, uh, or I order, I'll order his his favorite dinner instead of like asking him what he wants for dinner. I'm just gonna do it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. So, Those um, but what's interesting is Mr. Chapman would say that love has no gender, um, and that, uh, but but he wrote an entire book on the five love languages for men specifically for men. And when I saw that before I found this article, I was like, oh my gosh, I wonder if he looked at any of the research on, on gender role conflict theory and like all of these things. And then after this, I was like, oh no, 
Mm-mm. He did. Nope. <laughs> he don't know shit not, about that shit. No, you know none not, of that. Not he's not coming at it from that angle. No. Nope. Um, so, <laughs> um, I think that he had some really good ideas, but also in the article it talks about some of these um, ways of receiving love are basic needs, like. Sometimes we need help. We have to recognize that we need help. So we have to recognize, um, you know, when people do things for us, we can't do everything for ourselves. Physical touch. We actually need physical touch in order to survive when we are born. (laughs) So like, um, like, you know, human contact is a, um, sometimes like a necessity. Um, Words of affirmation. um, We kind of need that. Um, That's, that's a need um quality time and you know receiving gifts those are you know if we're not getting those that's called neglect mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. so to kind of explain like what some of my reactions were so i was reading this the bigot who wrote article um skimming it over and in one paragraph, the author says, in an affront to what Lil JC himself preached about loving one's neighbor as thyself, Chapman's website openly advocates unloving, hateful acts. He openly encourages discrimination toward the LGBTQ plus community. Unfortunately, that link in that article only now bounces to his general website, whatever that post was back in 2014 mm. on understanding homosexuality is no longer visible. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah to that shit, at least. The next paragraph says, Chapman also co-authors a KKK reminiscent book titled Winning the Race to Unity, where he blames reverse racism for the white Christian problem. And David, that is when you said about my facial reaction. Because <laughs> that was like, hold up. Now, this is slightly problematic for me because it is co-authored with a person of color. So I'm like, okay, this obviously with Candace needs, Owens? This needs <laughs> ignore that for the moment. Moving on. So this this needs context to be written. There's only been three reviews, and the most recent one, notably, no, sorry, not the most recent one. Anyways, one of them only gave it two stars and it said, maybe I'll finish at some point. It was a very traditional evangelical perspective. And I was put off by references to quote unquote reverse racism and him thanking Gary Chapman, quotes a white man, for uh, quoting, saving him from being a racist, end quote. So this person put this review on Goodreads and was like, I just can't do this. Like, maybe I'll return to it another time, but I find this this problematic. So for me, this really does kind of show, like I was talking earlier about like things aren't black and white, like there's, you know, the in-between, but they're making a well, you know, kind of perspective about like, this is not the Messiah. Please do not put this person up on a pedestal. Like there are things that need to be addressed within this. And then also later it says, interestingly, a sixth love language, distance, has emerged without Chapman's consent. Distance was likely drafted by a person who possesses insight and self-awareness and found them annoyed that all five of these are behaviors that intentionally cause interaction by the couple. And I just realized how accurate that is because I know couples that distance is an absolute, like, I don't want to say necessity, but it is a thing. And that would be a way to show love to their partner because they know that they need time and space. You mean me time. Right. Hmm. Therefore, that is why um, I think it's a really important disclaimer (laughs) to know that like, hey, this thing that like is very ubiquitous within our culture is not really, (laughs) is, is, is problematic. But um the i'm I'm having a day over here right um i'm gonna wrap this i'm gonna i'm gonna bring this around um but before i do that i want to say that a lot of the concepts that are in here overlay very well with um the gottman method uh which i reference constantly um in these in these podcasts um so, and that is an ethical, that is a, um, you know, um, 
empirically sound or empirically tested uh, theory, right? Practice. Um, so there, there is a lot of overlay with that, right? So some of these concepts, they make sense. Um, what I found really interesting, though, is hmm. how the um, LGBT community, LGBTQ plus community has adopted this and made this their own, essentially queering the five love languages, basically giving Mr. Chapman the, the middle finger mm. um, without probably even knowing it. Uh, but like there was an article, I I don't remember exactly where, where they, they took the, um, uh, they took the five lo love languages and uh, and adopted them to the uh, to the members of the Fab Five and Queer Eye. Mm. Um, <laughs> and I just thought that was hilarious. Uh, the the current Fab Five, not the, the original Fab, Fab Five. Fab five. Uh, um, and 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 reading just kind of glancing through through the article on Elite Daily. Um, oh, it makes perfect sense right so jonathan is uh words of affirmation he is totally words um, of affirmation huh he is totally words of affirmation he's mm -hmm. he's doing people's hair and just affirming them to the uh, uh through the whole thing it's he i love him <laughs> um anthony is uh acts of service no yes yeah. um tan is physical touch you know he is definitely the um uh the one who loves all his hugs um karama was quality time and bobby is gift is gift giving um so i just thought that was very interesting um how it fits. A, yeah. Um, and when I was kind of doing some research, I was like, oh, man, <laughs> here's this thing that I didn't know about this thing that I've been using as a therapist for years. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. It is, again, it's very interesting kind of like thinking about it and going, oh, <sighs> I, I, again, I think the concept, the idea behind it, the concept, the general like idea of these love languages is a sound concept um, given its creator, quote unquote. Um, yeah, it's a little hard to like. I, I want it like I feel like it's it's good. It's a good idea in theory, but can we? I need to separate it completely from who created it. Well, no, uh, it's, right? Isn't this evocative of like a, a, an ongoing trend over the hand, past handful of years in our podcast, yeah. where yeah. we've talked about be careful about putting people on pedestals, like mm -hmm. be wa be wary of like you know having all this like you know affirmation of a certain person or whatever and then you find out stuff about their the way they really feel or they really think or the the acts of whatever they do in their life and you're like whoa yeah like, this okay is this is yeah. problematic like you rape people you drug them you're a bigot you're a transphobe like i mean yeah. you know the list goes on and on and you're just like now what do i do what do i do but again i will say um kind of you know as it's a querying the subject and there's probably someone you know so i feel like again someone will probably come because i think this has been around for like 20 30 20 years. years now yeah yeah oh 30 oh <laughs> yeah 92 yeah. i did it years. i did it again didn't i yeah oops you oh. did it again yep yep it's okay oh, you man. feel young yeah Oh, that's that hurt. <laughs> that really hurt. It does hurt when you think oh. about it. Mm-hmm. 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 But again, uh. so this is something that is now, you know, 30 years old. Um, but it's kind of sustained and it's gotten new. I, I don't want to say new, but it's gotten like interest because of, you know, it's it 
you know, it is a good concept. Um, and I believe it is a good tool to help people. Um, again, notwithstanding who made it, I think it is a good tool. And I think it would be a really way, you know, way to kind of connect with your, your personal love languages and how you feel and how you express your love or want love to be expressed in your life without putting the who that love who that person you are persons you love is so mm -hmm. this you know if we keep it in the context of how it was written it was meant to be for like the husband to the wife right if if, if we're going on what was who the no i mean was. i think it was for i think it was for everybody in the uh you know cisgender opposite sex christian yeah yeah, yeah. marriage so that um, kind of thing and then so now it's a lot more i think if you take it beyond that concept beyond that context and put it into context of your if you're polyamorous the polyamorous you know you, what is your personal thing and see how it goes with aligns with your partners are yeah. If you're thinking about it in regards to even even like friendships, I could see this working really well. You know, Gary That's, talked yeah. about one of the things, you know, um, giving gifts is something he is good at. Um, but, you know, would that be everything? But his his big one was, you know, physical touch. But I think it has something to do with there's a difference between thinking of it as a love, like who you romantically love, as opposed to who you just love, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Friendly yeah. love. Phil yeah, Philia love. Um, who do you know? <laughs> uh, well, and the other thing with um, how this has um, change or how this doesn't apply, right, and how Gottman um, helps to expand or uh, kind of blur out the lines a little bit is that their theories are more contextual and allow for more um, these concepts to um, apply across, you know, various concepts, right? Um, the only like, other issue with, or the only thing that I would say with Gottman is on the surface, it's very monocentric. Uh, mm -hmm. But like that doesn't mean that the that the the tools cannot be not applied uh, for mm -hmm. more poly um, or open relationships. Um, the other, you know, another middle finger to Mr. Um, Chapman uh, that I found was, you know, how like how else can this be queered? Um, and there was a, a blog series on BDSM and love languages. So there were five separate articles where it talks about kinky quality time, kinky words of affirmation, kinky acts of service, kinky touch and kinky gifts hmm. from if you are if you were a if you are a sub or if you are a dom who this is your you know this is your love language, this is how you can show um those and this is how you can if you have a a dom or a uh, sub who um, this is their love language, this is what you could do for them, which also facilitates and talks about the importance of communication with mm. kinky couples. You know, like this is how you talk about your, um, like what you want. Um, because if you don't, if you don't tell somebody what you want, you're very likely not going to get it. I so want right now ed for us to do an ltas series on these or an ltak yeah <laughs> because okay. this is this is really i think good stuff about i love that these articles are balanced about like sub versus dom not so much versus but like it, it provides a balance you yep. know it has sections saying how to show love to a submissive whose primary language is fill in the blank how to love a dominant whose primary love language is. And I'm just like, wow, like, like, where has mm. this been? Um, because I think these are incredibly important if you're going to be in a DS relationship 
to understand these things, which is a context I wasn't thinking of when I took this quiz. You know, I was just going through it as like, you know, I was thinking about someone I was having a romantic relationship with, not necessarily someone that I might be having, you know, a, a kink uh, relationship with, so to speak. Mm -hmm. well, and, and, and that is, again, that brings us back to what Jeff said before about like taking this with the context, with your framework of if I'm in a, um, like a power dynamic situation, would my answers be different? Mm -hmm. So while like on outside of a power dynamic, say I'm somebody who really has a very successful, powerful, um, a job that is very much in control, I'm going to answer these questions differently if I'm just talking about, say, um, like my primary partner, right? Um, but if um, in a kink dynamic, I am a submissive and I like to give up control, success, and and um, and power, then my responses are going to be hella different. Mm -hmm. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Just looking to get something. I'm. I am not a sports fan, but I'm kind of keeping an eye on something because it's really important. I, I, I think you just answered my question yeah. that I had yeah. in my head. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's okay. It's got they've got a little time left. We'll see what happens. Oh. Anyway, moving right along. Moving right <laughs> oh, along. the game's not over. Okay. Yeah, it's not quite over, but it's close. Moving. Anyway, moving on. Focus. Moving on. Um, I also really like this, and I kind of would love to look at all of these. Um, each, I really quickly looked at the one that's my top one, which was acts of service. So I'm, I'm, I want to read through it and learn more because as someone who is um, kink positive and in the kink community, um, it is very interesting because I could see how I, in my head, I could see how it works, but I'm very curious what someone else is thinking or their thought processes on it because. Um, mm -hmm. The ones I could see being difficult are um, quality time. I could see potentially being the one that's the most difficult one. The one that's the most difficult, maybe. But how, our, how so? Well, depending thoughts? on the we depending on the DS relationship, they may be um, uh, long distance. It may be a long distance kind of thing where the ability to spend time together, maybe it could happen, don't get me wrong, but it would probably happen more like on Zooms or Skypes or uh, during phone calls. I'm not saying it can't happen. I just feel like it would be a little bit harder to well, maintain. Well, it doesn't have to be a quantity time. It's quality time. So. I agree. So, uh, special times. So can I, um, I want to throw something in there. Do it. Okay, so one of the TikToks that I put down was uh, where you have two people who really appreciate physical touch, but distance, but they are possibly like in different countries or, um, you know, it's a long distance relationship. Mm -hmm. I have a really interesting solution to that. If there is distance, um, and say you have a DS dynamic, right? Where one of them, you know, say like the sub is, um, uh, the sub's uh, love language is quality time, or I'm sorry, um, physical touch. What about, um, are you okay? Yeah, you're muted. I was clicking the TikTok and I wanted it to stop. Oh. <laughs> Good luck um, with that. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so, so, so you have like a sub who, um, who really likes physical touch. Um, you have, as the dom, the sub go and have a, uh, an encounter that does have physical touch, that you facilitate. Mm hmm. Fair. Yep, 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 yeah. Basically, get a surrogate. Uh huh. And you have the play partner of the sub report back to the Dom 
with feedback. Mm -hmm. I have, I haven't ever done that before. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Heads, I think we should do this as a part of our LTAK series, a series within a series discussing the love languages, um, but make them kink love languages. Um, or make kinky. So save those. So save those articles, Gary. <laughs> Baby, I already went into the to our big list and and wrote a thing and linked all of them and yeah, it's it's there. We Copy to... pasted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Well, very cool. Um, and then you know, like like I said, so you know, the love languages, while it does have a uh, problematic uh, origin. Um, People are having fun with it and it's working for a large, diverse uh, community, right? So like I said, on TikTok, uh, if you type in love languages um, in the search, you're going to find a whole hell of a lot of people and a whole lot of results of people, you know, queering the, the love languages. Um, and I use the word queer as in, um, you know, like LGBTQ, but also just making it strange and not what it was intended to be um my favorite though has got to be the five hate like <laughs> five hate languages <laughs> i just oh, think that's okay. hilarious um it was like you know uh, what were they um let me pull it up hold on Absence, gift revoking, words of defamation, acts of disservice, mental touch. <laughs> I was the last one was the one I was trying to hear, and I'm like, what the hell is he saying? Are they saying? Okay. So, yeah, I'd rather not be touched. Mm. That kind of sounds like gaslighting to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I think if you were to like, <laughs> those are all just form forms of abuse. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 When I was as I'm listening to it, like words of defamation. Yeah. Um, acts of disservice. Yeah. Like totally like get no, no, thank you. Uh, yeah. Which in which also in a kink if you look at through a kink dynamic. I mean could be, true. Could be what people want. Don't don't yeah, that could I mean oh boy. Which um which are <laughs> which are again that's love languages. Yeah. <laughs> oh I I think this is I will have to say that that like so many other times, I go into something with one train of thought and then I come out another totally different tunnel going, that was a fun ride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was not expecting to go, to go on that journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is really cool. This was a good episode. I I, and I appreciate the um, I I really do appreciate the love languages and the ideas behind them and the concepts behind them, and I think they will help partners, couples, what have you, determine ways to make sure that they can make that love sustain and and last. Because the thing that usually happens sometimes is people don't know they don't know what the other one wants, and sometimes that's just because you're not you say it so you're not paying attention well there's more to it than that if my like if my love language quote unquote is acts of service i'm that's gonna that could potentially happen without mm -hmm. my like asking for it if that makes sense because really the way sometimes for me acts of service works is i don't have to ask i don't have to i don't ask for it it just happens um 
Whereas, somebody somebody knowing that might be be like looking for opportunities where they can mm -hmm, slip mm -hmm. that in on occasion. Yeah. And if you if your actor if your love language is say um uh, quality time and you're not spending time together, that could be, you know, that has the potential to be a problem. Yep. And if you don't express that as a problem. Like, I need you to spend more time with me or we need to spend more time together. Please get off your phone so I can actually talk to you. Let's have a conversation, like any of that shit. Like, then if you don't say that, then what's going to, like, it's not going to happen. And you're just going to get more frustrated. And eventually the relationship, whatever it may be, will fizzle. And then you ask yep. why, and they go, well, you never talked to me. We didn't do anything. Well, I didn't know, Queen, so how am I supposed to know? <laughs> it's <laughs> all back to communication. Yes, communicate, communicate, communicate. Mm -hmm. One of our first uh, 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 lores. 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 Lore episode. God, that's hilarious. L-O-R. Lore. Uh, so I do want to say this, Ed, like, um, in the beginning of this, like one of the things you covered was the five neurodivergent love languages. And mm -hmm. I really appreciate that list because um, as someone who has like a very significant chunk of my life, a best friend um, who has discovered this aspect about them, I look back now and I'm like, wow, info dumping was kind of a thing for a long time. And I just <laughs> never really understood that like i mean i accepted it i didn't have issues with it um but i'm like oh how interesting and then the last one specifically i found this cool fill in the blank and thought you would like it i think is something that i see a lot of um from people who are aware of their neurodivergence um and it just it really really resonates with me it's it's very interesting because I think others may not understand like where that comes from or what that's about. And so for some people, like repetition is comforting because it has a predictable outcome. You know what the what it's going to be. This is how it was described to me. And I found it really interesting. They were like watching the same movie over and over again, watching the same TV show series, like um, uh, reading the same books. Um, you know, these these predictable patterns of behavior and outcomes give them comfort, make them, you know, feel better or comfortable or safe, you know, whatever the it may be. And I and it's interesting because I'm not that way. Like for many years, I've always kind of wondered where people are like, oh, like and this isn't true about everybody. But some people are like, you know, I've seen that movie like 25 times. And I'm like, why? <laughs> why would you do that? Like. But that's because I'm 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 like I'm good. Like if I've seen something once, if I read something once, like I'm kind of okay with that. Unless it really touches my soul in a certain way, um, then I will go back again and again and again. Um, so like it's it's interesting to me, like the different um aspects of how you you kind of look at that stuff. So my my point of saying that example was like sort of a parallel. Like I, I can understand that some people would be like, you know, I find comfort in this. Like it always makes me laugh. It always makes me cry. It always like, you know, whatever that that thing is. And you know, so um I think that, that that's really cool that one of the biggest takeaways is like well, the person who helped establish and put this, uh, bleh, I, don't, bleh, I don't like saying establish. Um, well, the person who really put this on the map 30 years ago has notable, like questionable, like intent and, and things that need to be looked into further. If someone really wants to be supportive of them, there's all these modifications, variations on a the theme. And that's so nice to see over and over and over again, that there are alternatives or different ways of, of this being utilized um and that really speaks i think to the support um you know that that you can have to people yeah yeah um on that topic uh i think that uh when it comes to neurodivergent individuals um or people um a lot of those are are things even for me um like especially parallel play if if you aren't neurodivergent right or um like you i 
you know, I have a husband who would say that if he was diagnosed, uh, you know, if, if, if he was a child today, he would probably be diagnosed, right? And he has said, like, or I have gotten frustrated because sometimes we'll just be sitting in the room not doing anything. And he's like, well, those are the times that I love the most. But I'm like, but we're not doing anything. He goes, yeah, we're, we're together. Like, you're doing your thing and I'm doing my thing. We are doing something. And I'm like, <laughs> oh. That's that's parallel play. <laughs> I don't see that as um, something I would really value, but for him, that is like like he loves that the most. Um, so that was very helpful for me to go. Oh, okay, so I just need to find something to do when we're not really doing anything, <laughs> right? Like he is, he'll be like on his computer. Um, and I'll be just sitting there, um, and he, and, you know, I will, I just, yeah, um, that has been really helpful for me to be like, okay, so that's okay. That's, he really likes that and appreciates that. Okay. Right. And I think that's key to know that that's, that's a really like comfortable, loving experience for another person yeah. to just like, to, to have, to share the space. Yep. to make the space for each other without actually having to be engaged in something. So like, I, I think I'm kind of like versatile in that. So like if Ed and I were in the same space, we could both be on devices the whole time while like there's videos or a movie playing or something and that would be okay. But if Ed also was kind of like, can we play a game? Like a board game, card game or whatever, I'd probably be like, okay. You know what I mean? So like, like you know, it, it, I think it's it's knowing what you want or kind of what you're interested in or what you're looking for. Or like we were saying before, obviously communication is key, like how to put that into, into the context of the moment and the relationship. Yep. Yeah. So yay love languages. Yeah. Yeah. A asterisk. <laughs> well and i i think the whole like distance thing is definitely also love language and they giving the me time too so when we when we had our uh our um lor on uh the four horsemen um one of them was taking breaks um knowing when you need your time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely which is really really important okay. self-care is not selfish mm -hmm. true debt yep and guess what what i think that's the end period but you know maybe we'll get back to this in a different uh the, the topic category <laughs> everybody Ooh, just saying yay. could be happening uh, we'll find out when, uh, but in the meantime, uh, tell us what your love languages are. Don't necessarily have to say what the ones we specifically list. You can expand on that. I'm sure there's more love languages than that. But you can do that in many ways, such as going to our website, cupsoutloud.com, and leaving a comment on the blog. You can also shoot us an email at cupsoutloud at gmail.com, or leave us a voicemail at 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Comes Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can also join our entourage chat at tinyworld.com slash telegram at dash col. If you want to know when we're planning on recording these shows, you can check out our Google Calendar at tinyworld.com slash calendar dash col. You can also get various accoutrements, such as a hat, a shirt, a, a mug, uh, plenty of things over at our Zazzle store at zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Some of those designs there are designed by Smashy, which you can find more of his designs at his T public site at tpublic.com slash user slash smashy the bear. And you can also become a patron of us at patreon.com slash comes out loud. Or if you just want to send us some cash, we can go to paypal.me slash comes out loud. You can rate us on Apple podcasts, find us at Google play, Amazon, audible, Spotify, Various other places. Places. Uh, you can find me anywhere on the internet as Box at Box Puppy Box Cup Box something or other. 
or Windgem, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M, on Twitch, where I stream Bears and Dragons on Thursdays. Uh, took a little break from my Final Fantasy streaming this weekend, just because I needed some time to myself. Damon! Um, if you wish to get in touch with you, me, you can find me at TheaterCup79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9 on most bear-related sites or on Facebook. You can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. Ed, if folks would like to find you in an uh, online social media kind of way, where would they go? Well, you can find me on Facebook as um, Edward AC. Um, I'm on Instagram as uh, Unicub underscore um, Sex Brain Wizard. Uh, I have a, a website, EAC Therapy. And I'm also on Twitter. Um, and for those who um, are not my family or friends or clients, uh, <laughs> you can find me as Jeep Daddy 3. So if you are his friend or family or client, don't uh, go there. Please don't go there. <laughs> Just uh, don't. Why are you watching the show? Anyways. You know. <laughs> With that, take it out, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. Ciao for now.